That's right, everyone. There is a new content update for Noita following the epilogue update, and I've been jokingly referring to it as the tiny update, because it has just a few really small things in it. Rather than breaking it up into several videos, I've decided to give you the full rundown in this video. Most of this update is secret optional content, so there will be tiny spoilers. Here's a list of what I'll be covering so you can skip around if you would like to. Let's go. The first of several new structures, this massive scale must be balanced in some way. Come here after creating the new sun, which I have a video on here, and you'll see this large yellow gem. After completing the entire Sunseed quest, your world will be in balance and you will have unlocked the Omega Black Hole. Even light dies eventually. That's pretty creepy. Unfortunately, this location is just a one-time spell unlock, and in future runs, you'll have to find this spell in endgame shops and wands. I decided to come to the Desert Chasm in order to test it against one of the very tiny creatures this update has introduced. We are in the vicinity of the home of Tiny itself. Several beta updates ago, this enormous and mysterious skull appeared in the game world far below everything else of interest except for hell. And to this skull is where we're headed right now. I'm just gonna pop a long distance cast and the Omega Black Hole on this wand and then we're gonna dig straight down until we awaken Tiny. That's right. It's just a little guy. If you don't have melee immunity, then you're probably already dead, because Tiny does a crazy amount of melee damage in a large area around its head. It also bleeds ominous liquid and applies poison on contact. And as you're about to see, summoning an Omega Black Hole is entirely ineffective. So how do you kill it? Well, I'm gonna pop a bunch of information up on the screen relating to its stats and immunities, and you can pause the video if you wanna read all that. But basically, what I'm gonna use is Weakening Curse Electricity, Piercing, and Thunder Charge. Now, let me just wash this stain off and then wait for our quarry to return. There it is. All right, the moment of truth. Open wide. The first shot almost took it out, and the second shot does the trick. And as you can see, it drops a full heal, a large max health increase, and two very nice wands. At the time of this recording, Tiny dropped two tier 10 wands. Now it drops a tier 6 and a tier 10. This is also currently the only way in the entire game to get a tier 10 wand, which usually contain endgame spells like Giga Nukes. Yes, please. Nice. Wait, look at all those nukes. <laughs> yes. So, Omega Black Hole didn't work against Tiny, but with Nala, you can use it as a very effective digging wand. Of course, I don't have everything I need on me to make this fast, but you can see just how effective it is. Sure, it hurts you a little bit when you use it, but meh, small price to pay. And for defeating Tiny, you unlock one of these tree achievements right here. From here, we're gonna go up to the power plant and get the spatial awareness perk from Mecha Colmy, which has been buffed. That's your location, that's the nullification altar, and it shows the locations of all the essences and some other secrets, including the one we're looking for next, which has six possible locations in the world, with only one of those being the correct location depending on your world seed, depicted as a green dot on the map. Mine happens to be beneath the frozen vault. So, using black holes, I'm gonna dig down through the rock until I reveal the greatest room in any video game ever made. Unfortunately, we happen to be a heartless maniac of a person, so yeah. With each death of a little horror monster, the large one, Friend, becomes more and more powerful. This first secret requires us to kill only nine little horror monsters, but this cave, the Friend Cave, is in all parallel worlds, so you can potentially power up this chunky boy infinitely. And just one cave is enough to power it up to extremely impressive levels. At the time of this recording, I used this wand with primarily Venomous Curse dealing the damage. However, they've patched it and made it immune to this damage, but also it's currently bugged and can be killed very easily. But if you're watching this in the future, this might be the most difficult to kill creature in the entire game. 
Obviously, I'll be making a follow-up video about this later on. As you can see, it healed from my attack, and the only way I could find to kill it was by repeatedly attacking it with the previously shown wand to stack immense curse damage on it. In a little while here, you'll see just how much HP this thing has when buffed with the souls of nine little ones. Okay, here we go. Look at those damage ticks. Crazy. Chunky boy, and it dropped Chunky Nuggets, which it might not drop anymore, sadly. But I got over 2 million gold from this with, I think, just one greed perk. And for defeating friend buffed first with 9 horror monster deaths, we unlock this tree achievement. But we're not finished yet. On the background wall of the friend cave is this depiction of the Avarice Diamond, beneath which says Friendship. So, what we need to do now is to get the big friend to follow us all the way to the tower. Unfortunately, the little ones are also quite eager to follow, and because of enemies and other hazards, only the large ones survive the trip. But that's okay, since that's all we need right now. Once we get him in the right spot, we just knock him down into the diamond, and with a blast we unlock the Giga Holy Bomb. Bigger, and therefore holier. <laughs> Oh yeah! A little underwhelming, but trust me, this thing is extremely destructive. In the previous clip, you may have noticed that I had charmed the big friend. I did that by getting an entire flask of pheromone and just breaking it directly on top of him. Although he has a protective field that destroys all matter and liquids, you should be able to bypass it in this way. Then, what if we were to lead him all the way across the world? Through the tree, to the entrance of the mines, where we give him pets because he's a good boy. Yeah, you're a good boy. <laughs> Across the lava lake, where we find out what happens when we pit him against the pit boss. Now, it was actually a really good fight, but the wand connoisseur inflicts a lot of debuffs. However, our friend is very tough. I mean, look at how close he's getting. But in the end, Kazi is nothing but a dirty cheater abusing polymorph shots before eating our poor friend. You will be missed. Now, for our final secret concerning horror monsters, we're going to lead just one of the little ones down the chasm. Yes, to Carl's racetrack. Let's just fly up in here and just wait for it. Just wait for it. Come here, Carl. Yes! That's right, you can actually have a little horror monster ride Carl around the track. But that's not all. Where do you think we're going with this? Yup, it allows you to get a horror monster through the cursed rock surrounding the tower without it dying. Although, I almost died since I wasn't really paying attention to my HP. So yes, Suffer, you can much more easily send Little Flash to the moon. I don't have footage of it, but Carl can also now actually push the suns. Anyway, bringing one of these little guys into the diamond now unlocks the Giga Nuke spell, which was actually added a while ago, but I haven't covered it in a video until now. So there you go. You can also no longer polymorph into a horror monster to trigger this secret. Thus, attaching one to Carl is basically the most realistic way of achieving this. Now we return to the scale for a new secret they added with this. Seeing me use telekinetic kick on this should clue you in as to what happens when we bring one of these to the mountain altar. That's right, your curiosity is rewarded with a sun. Bringing the other gem here now will just destroy it immediately, so you'll have to do the other one in a new run or possibly in parallel worlds. For creating both of these in this way, you unlock both of these tree achievements. But having a sun or dark sun this close to the surface means you could more easily use them as weapons. Interesting thing to think about. Ah, the idyllic beauty and calm serenity of the Lake Island. Previously, this area was somewhat lacking in the offensive department. Well, worry about that no longer, because there is now a very, very big threat lurking deep below the surface. We're just going to swim below the island to around this spot right here, and then fall. And keep falling. Deeper and deeper and deeper, until we find Levi the Leviathan. 
another very tiny addition to this extremely tiny update. Now, this massive boss is no joke. Each one of those projectiles is basically a giant green glowing Omega Saw Blade. So we're gonna just return the favor using this wand right here. Besides occasionally firing that spread shot, it also retaliates every single instance that it takes damage. When I fought it here, one of the only ways to kill it was to use slice damage, thus Omega Saws. Yesterday, they actually pushed a patch that allows you to use weakening curses on it and also reduces its max HP from 10,000 to 7,500, making it far easier. And I have to say that I did really prefer the previous version. It was very tanky, and this fight took maybe 10 extremely tense minutes, and it was nice to have to do that in order to defeat it. But it is what it is, and it's still a new boss in Noita, and I still love it. Anyway, at the end of that 10 minutes, it finally died. And I almost died too. And yes, that was a great treasure chest. And yes, it did turn all the water in the entire world to smoke. Amazing. Let's just fall into the abyss to retrieve those hearts. A full heal and a max HP. The second max HP came from the great chest, actually. But that's not all. It also opened the portal where it died, which takes you to... The teleporter room, an actual fast travel teleporter hub encased in extremely dense rock. Absolutely amazing reward. The bottom left portal leads to the orb room at the bottom of the snow chasm. The portal in the middle left takes you to the island. The portal in the top left takes you to the ocarina high above the island. The portal in the bottom right leads to the orb room in hell. The portal in the middle right leads to the Nullification Altar, deep in the Sand Caves. And the portal in the top right takes you to the Coral Chest, as well as the new Tome of Essences, containing both very interesting lore as well as a hint for the Moon Quest. If you were to try to cheat it by digging to the teleporter room or finding the coordinates and teleporting into it, then the portals immediately despawn. That is, unless you defeat the Leviathan at least once, since defeating it also stabilizes the portals for all future runs so that you can dig here. And where is here? To the right of the underground jungle, pretty much right next to the Dragon Cave. The new perk added in this update is Iron Stomach. You no longer suffer from negative effects of eating, including drinking acid, drinking lava, drinking polymorphine, and drinking berserkium, which could be considered negative. You could also severely overeat without slowing down or violently exploding. Yay! Finally, this guy right here, Gordon Hesey, can be encountered in the wild. Previously, you could only rarely polymorph yourself or something else into him. Down in Hesey base, they gave him his very own kitchen as a rare structure. There he is right there, complete with a pan of fully cooked meat. That's right, there's a sort of cooking system in the game now. Eating the fully cooked meat gives you a few seconds of a speed buff, and the Hisi chef himself throws a total of 12 sausages at you. They don't do any damage, though he will try to punch you if he gets close. Currently, I don't know if the cooking has any other use, but it's pretty in depth. Lightly cooked meat, cooked meat, fully cooked meat, and burned meat. So it seems like it might be used for something else, maybe another secret, maybe even the cauldron room. Other than all of this, they also added a few other enemies, including an ice mage, a homing mage, and a new mimic. I especially don't want to spoil that one for you. <laughs> Don't want to rob you of that jump scare. Anyway, guys, I don't really vocalize this much outside of streams. When I stream, I talk about anything and everything, but the videos I make for this game, they do take an extraordinary amount of time and effort, and I, I never, ever ask for likes, but if you do like my videos, please consider hitting the like button, especially now with the way the algorithm is. It's kind of the difference between a video actually sticking around for a little while and doing well, or just sinking into oblivion along with my channel. <laughs> but uh, anyway, okay, I thank you guys, thank you. Always, I appreciate each and every one of you very, very much. And I hope you have an amazing day. I'll see you next time. Happy Noiting.